Hi, this is Steve with Insteon. I've got a remodel project I'm doing here, and this is an outside stairwell that has a three-way switch. So it's a, uh, it's a standard switch behind a weatherproof cover that's got a mechanical lever that actually uh, switches the, an old toggle-style switch on and off. What we're going to do is replace it with an Insteon switch, and we're going to go through the wiring uh, to show you easy ways to identify what wires are what based on how they're landed on the switch itself. Okay, I've removed the switch out of the wall and you can see, um, if you look close, there are two different colored screws on one side and you may find different configurations on different three ways. Underneath you can see it's a standard toggle switch and then it's got a mechanical uh, plate over it that actually just flicks it up and down to give it that sort of weatherproof um, cover. But uh, if you look at the switch on the right, it's darker than the one on the left and if this was not a 40-year-old uh, a switch, you'd probably be able to tell the color a lot easier. Also, in this case, there happens to be a red wire on the one that's a little bit shinier. So I usually refer to them as brass and bronze, um, but uh, if I turn it around, I have another one that also uh, matches the same color. So in this case, the odd color right here is the black. It's this one. This is the odd one. So if I look at the two again, the one on the left is a little bit lighter and it actually matches that one. Okay, those two are our traveler wires. The other one, the odd colored screw, and this is gonna be consistent no matter um, what three-way you look at, but the odd color screw is either your hot wire coming in or your load wire going out. Let's go up and look at the one upstairs now. Okay, I've gone upstairs now, and I, I told you this is a remodel, so I have an open stud, and I took the switch out of the wall. Now, something else you'll notice is that I've got completely different colors up here. So this can happen sometimes where if the conduit that goes from the switch down below and it's part of a three-way actually goes through another junction box, and maybe the wires were short and somebody changed the wires, and uh, or it was an addition. In this case, it happened to be an addition that was added on. So the wire colors um, are different. Typically, travelers are the same color. You can't always go off that, though. Now, in this case, if I look close, I can tell that my screw color down where the yellow is is different than the one where the oranges are tied to. Now, in person, this may be a lot clearer to you. Once again, this is a very old switch, probably 40 years old, and uh, so it's a little bit oxidized, but when I'm looking at it directly, I can tell that the one with the yellow wire on it is actually the color that's different than the other screws. Now, the other two screws are the travelers, and those are the same wires that go down to the other two I pointed out earlier. Um, but they happen to be different colors. So at this point, what I would do is just disconnect those travelers, and I'm going to cap off the yellow wire. Just like at the other end, I'm going to cap off the wire that is... Um, the one that was on a different colored screw. Now we're going to go through and show you that process, what it looks like now that I've capped it off and I'm ready to hook up the Insteon switch. Now I removed the switch out of the wall up on the second floor and like I said this is a remodel project so it's down to the open studs. Um, now I can tell when looking at it here that the top two screws that have the orange wires are darker than the one down at the bottom. It may not look like that in the video but I can tell when I look at it in person. Another way is in looking at the conduit, the two that are going down together, those typically would be the travelers. The one that's going up by itself, that typically would either be my hot wire coming in or my load wire going out. Now, I happen to know that in this case, the fixture is right up here. So it makes sense that the yellow wire going up is going to my fixture and that's the load. So some of it is just sort of common sense as well, but you can't always go off that. You'll also notice that the colors have changed than what they were down there. I had a black and a red that were my travelers, and now they've changed. The reason why is this was an addition, and the addition stopped at a light down uh, right outside the door, and that was extended. When it was extended, the wires colors changed um, from two oranges and a yellow. Now, typically, travelers would be the same color. That's kind of the standard way electricians do it. Uh, but you can't always go off that. That's why looking at the screw colors that they're connected to 
and knowing what those are, two of them are your traveler screw uh, terminals and one is either your hot coming in or your load. Once you identify those, it'll make it a lot easier. Now, I'm going to go and take the wires off the switch and I'm going to cap off the one that is either the hot coming in or the load on each switch and the travelers will decide whether we need them or not. Okay, like I had mentioned up above, you can also tell um, a lot of times by the way the wires go into the conduits together. So remember I said there was a black and a red and it was the ones on the left hand side here on the uh, front and back of this switch. Uh, those both go up into the same conduit up here. And then there's one black that goes up into another conduit with the neutral. Well, that one black happens to match up with which one I thought was the um, hot coming in, uh, which was the different colored screw terminal. So you see the one on the right, slightly different color than the one on the left. And it's always the two that are the same screw terminal color. Those are your travelers. And the oddball one, that is the one that you're looking to identify and separate. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, this is the way I'm going to leave it so it's kind of prepped, ready for the switch to go in. That oddball screw uh, color uh, that's on the terminal, that one gets capped off. At this point, we're going to assume we don't know whether it's hot or whether it's the switch leg. And now I'm going to go upstairs and do the same thing on the other switch. Okay, I've isolated now all of the wires up here. Now, I probably didn't have to do that on the travelers, but I'm going to be energizing one of them downstairs. So just to play it safe, I'm capping them all off. Now, the one on the right, in looking at it, I'm pretty positive that it goes to my light up here because uh, I can see the conduit runs up the wall and it makes sense that that's where it would go. Um, the one downstairs is the one that has the hot coming in, but I haven't actually confirmed that. Now, there's two ways to do it. You can just hook a switch up to it, and if the switch powers up, you can tell which one is hot, or you can get a meter. So I'm going to get a meter and just go and show you the process of uh, checking which one is hot and then how to make the determination on where you hook up what wire. Now, another good indicator is the box that has the hot where it starts from. That had a neutral splice that was tucked in the back of the box. So I went ahead and put one into the meter into that, and uh, the other end I hooked up to the one that I had capped off that I assumed was the hot. And as I look at my meter, indeed, it is almost 120 volts. Okay, this is where I started now. Let's take a look at what I've done. Where the hot originates, you cap off the load wire of the switch because you're not gonna be switching anything at this point. What I've done is I found the neutral splice in the back of the box and I uh, hooked the neutral wire of the switch to it. What I've done differently here is I took one of the traveler wires and I hooked it to the constant hot. And I also tied the black wire to the switch. So you know the one that I had capped off, I grabbed one of those traveler wires, added it to the splice, and also hooked the black wire from the switch. Now, let's go upstairs and we'll finish the process. Okay, so I went upstairs now and I tested both the orange wires trying to see which one was hot because it's even though it's not the same color down there it did change wire colors um, it is does have the same continuity so when I hooked up one of those to constant power I came up here to find out which one it was and it's the one that's on the bottom now I could have grabbed that neutral splice in the back of the box but you may not have one in some cases and actually in my case it's not even a splice it's just a wire that loops through since that wire looks a little too short for me to make a splice out of you know what I'm gonna do I'm going to go ahead and go back down to the box downstairs and I'm going to make my other traveler wire, I'm going to make it a neutral because I don't want to have to get into this box and try to, uh, try to make a splice out of a real tight connection like that back there. See there's not much to work with and uh, so I'm going to take this other orange wire that I'm not using now and I'm going to make it a neutral. So I'm going to go downstairs and do that. Okay, what I've done down here now is I took that other traveler wire we weren't using and I added it to the neutral splice. Now that other traveler up at the top of the stairs is going to be my neutral. Okay, I've now made the final connections up here. You can see the yellow wire that we had determined was either the hot or the switch leg. Once I found I had a constant hot downstairs at that switch, I knew the yellow wire was my switch leg, so I hooked the red wire to it. We had determined also when I went and hooked one of my travelers to the constant hot so I would have a constant hot at this box that it was the orange wire on the bottom. That's the one I put the meter on and that one I hooked my hot wire to or the black. 
And I looked at my junction box and I didn't have a good neutral splice. It was just a looped neutral in the back of the box and it was gonna be pretty tough to pull out and get a splice on. So I went and I had one extra traveler. I went down in the box down on the first floor. I hooked it to the neutral and I tied this other traveler to it. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do also is get white tape and go ahead and tape your traveler wires so they don't uh, look odd if somebody goes in and says, wow, why is an orange wire connected to a white wire of the switch? So taping them is a good idea. The other thing we can do is just make sure they indeed turn on right now. The switch does go on. And the light. Okay, so now in both locations, we're gonna hook our ground wire up. This can just mount to the back of the box. Uh, if you have a metal conduit that attaches um, to your box going up to wherever your panel is or your outlet or your uh, lamp location, if it's a metal conduit and it's half inch or under, it's considered a ground and you can then just mount the ground wire to the uh, back of an existing metal box that the switch might be uh, installed in. Uh, we're going to do the same thing downstairs. I also recommend taping your traveler wires and tape them white. So if somebody else goes in the box, they realize that you've repurposed the wire to become um, uh, neutral. Now, in the case of the traveler wire that's a hot, it's already a color that would be appropriate to be uh, used as a hot, so it's not mandatory that you color it, but it is for neutrals. You do want to make sure that you are uh, uh, retaping those. If it was a white wire that I used as a hot, then I would want to retape it to be something other than white, uh, preferably a color like black or red. Okay, I put the switch back in the box. I've left it loose because we're going to be putting drywall back on here. It's going to have to come off again. But everything's taped and anchored. And now I'm going to go downstairs and do the one on the first floor. Okay, I've got my switch downstairs now anchored. I'm going to put a weatherproof cover on it. We'll get them linked together and we'll be all done. Thanks for watching.